So family, thank you for joining me on today. Okay. So if you see me looking here, I'm talking to Facebook and up here, I'm talking to our family, our cousins, cousins and them on Instagram. So thank you so much for joining me on today. Um, this is our opportunity to kind of just come together and just have a candid conversation. Um, it's been a while since I checked in with you guys. So I'm on the roll. Yesterday I checked in, today I'm checking in and then tomorrow I'm going to check in with you guys just to have a a quick conversation because there's a lot going on right now. And so conversation is a way that we can come together and get through what it is that we are experiencing. So if you are meeting me for the first time, my name is Lakeisha Woodard. I am your sister coach and the founder of A Sister's Truth. And I teach high achieving women how to find fulfillment by gaining clarity on their purpose and create an action plan to pursue it. Now, I do this because it's one thing to know purpose and it's a whole nother thing to operate in purpose. And the way that I help my clients to pursue purpose, coaching, my online master life classes, and also through Candace conversations like this, like the one that we have in right now. So with that being said, I want to just start off with just talking to you about how my day went yesterday. So before I get into it, if you don't mind, take a moment to share this video with your family, your friends across all your social media platforms, especially if you know someone who just has some obstacles they need to overcome and they just need some encouraging words or just honestly some answers to some questions that they have, some hard questions that no one is able then please take a moment and share this video with them because I want to communicate with you guys. So leave your comments, leave your questions so I can answer them and respond, right? Because this is a two-way conversation, if you will. So this is my time to just really love on you and pour into you and vice versa. But I can't do that if the people that need to be on, the, on this video, watch this video, is not here. <laughs> Or, you know, if you're not communicating with me. So thank you, Paige. Thank you so much for sharing. So, hey, friend. Hey, Erica. Hey, girl. Hey, how are you? So I wanted to just start off by just talking to you about, you know, how my day went yesterday. So if you don't mind me, how you went um, yesterday as well, or how are you doing today? How, how is your day going today? So yesterday... I, you know, took the day off. I slept in until about 11.45 yesterday morning, just having a really good day. Got up. I was super productive. Just, you know, just going about with my day. And so just like many of you, I hop on social media and I'm scrolling through, you know, checking out my favorite peeps, liking their, their posts and things like that. Getting my word of encouragement, inspiration too, because even a coach in each culture, it just is. I mean, you know, it's a cycle, right? And so I run across um, the post about Amy Cooper and the whole incident that happened in Central Park in New York. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about it. Amy C Cooper is the white woman who decided to call the police on a black man just because she can. <laughs> just because she can. And that video just really like stirred something up in my spirit, if you will, because it just showed how she just invoked her white privilege. Like, I don't even normally talk about incidents like this, but I have to voice my day. This because Amy Cooper, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, take a moment and uh, well, after we have this conversation, go and look for the video. Because Amy Cooper, they said that she lost her job, you know, because what she did was racist because the man wasn't threatening her. You know, he nicely, politely asked her to put her dog on a leash. She refused to do so. You know, she said she was going to call the cops. He asked her, you know, politely told her, well, go ahead and call the cops. if that's what you choose to do. She's getting all up in his face, you know, being aggressive and tell him, I'm going to call 911 and say an African-American man is threatening me. So... With that being said, after all that went down, Amy Cooper lost her job and she also lost her dog. Okay. <laughs> she lost her job and lost her dog. But this man could have lost his life. Could have lost his life because she made this fraudulent call to 911 saying that she was in intimate 
intimate danger and she wasn't. The way that this world is moving around right now, like the police could have came into that park, guns are blazing, and he could have lost his life, right? So that didn't sit right with me. I ain't gonna lie, it pissed me off a little bit. But you know, when things like that happen, you gotta stay focused, right? Continue doing what God has told you to do, right? And move forward. I'm trying to go on with my good day and do my book, my book club on my book, you know, pouring into other women and helping them to embrace their purpose. And I run across, you know, Sean King's post about George Floyd, a man who was killed in Minnesota by cops who held him down for a long period of time. The cop had his knee on his neck and the man ended up dying. In the video that we were watching, media. I was just speechless. Like I was, I was, I was just speechless. I was mad, pissed off, you know, because I got brothers that live in Minnesota. Y'all know I got family that live in Minnesota. I got like 50 nieces and nephews. And I and I'm not even exaggerating that live in Minnesota, not too far from where this man was killed. And, I, and, it, and I'm just like, what do I do? Paige had a good week, been home all week, and we have been doing things around the house. I'm so, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. You haven't seen the video? It's a little disturbing. It's a little disturbing, just, just to be honest just to forewarn you. So I see these two particular incidents yesterday and now I'm now I'm, I'm very perturbed, right? Because people that look like me are being taken advantage of and we're being killed in the streets. It's very painful. It's very painful to watch and to know that this is going on, right? Because that could have easily been one of my brothers. Easily, easily. And on Sean King's post on his page, you know, he has the number up for the DA, Mike Freeman, for us to call and let them know that those police officers, like, they need to face, they need to be prosecuted. Now, the officers, from what I understand, have lost their jobs, but they need to be prosecuted because that was murder. Hands down, it was murder, right? And so now we see these posts about calling the DA, speaking up, you know, and telling the DA that justice needs to be served. So I come on here to, to ask you this. Once you've done that, once you've called the DA, Mike Freeman, what else are you going to do? Do you only plan to call the DA and that's it? Do you really think that that's all you're supposed to do is just call the DA? I'm here to tell you that it's not. That's not all you're supposed to do. Am I asking you to start a protest in your city to fight for, you know, to fight for justice? If that's not your forte? No. Am I asking you to quit your job and become an and join the fight against in injustice? If that's not your calling, no. Am I asking you to do something that you haven't been called to do? Absolutely not, because that's not my place to do so. So who am I to tell you to do those things? But what I am asking you to do is to be obedient and operating your purpose. Retweeting the stories, leaving comments, calling the DA, supporting activists like Sean King, those things are great, but it's not enough. And it's not all that you're supposed to do. We were given a purpose to fulfill and you must do that. We're all connected in some way, family. And the assignment that God has placed on your life is an important assignment. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have gave it to you. For all your purpose could be the link that will stop the injustice, you know, from happening in the future. We have no idea 
how our purpose fits into God's grand plan. We have no idea. And to be honest with you, you know, we may not never know how our purpose fits into his grand plan. But what I do know is that we need to stop being afraid and we need to start being obedient. Because the purpose that you've been given was given to you for a reason. And you are already equipped to start operating your purpose and making an impact now. Right now. Who cares if your purpose doesn't bring Beyonce level success? Who cares? We're not even thinking about that. All we want, all we need is a solution that you're supposed to provide for the problem that we need fixing. That's all we care about. I promise you, that's all we care about. So, yeah, I'm going to venture to say that some way, somehow. God told you to do. Too afraid to do. Right. Could have prevented George Floyd's incident yesterday or whenever it happened. And it could possibly, you know, prevent future instances just like that from happening. I'm going to venture to say that. Because how can you disagree with me? You're not even you're not even operating your purpose. So how do you, so how can you say otherwise? I, I'm, I'm I'm just I'm just saying. So now can we just really like take a moment and stop being afraid to pursue purpose because we're in the middle of, middle of a pandemic, right? Can we stop being afraid to pursue purpose because we're in the middle of a pandemic? Because because guess what? Injustice hasn't slowed down. People that look like me are still being killed in the streets, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic. So why are you slowing down? Why are you not pursuing your purpose? We can't keep using the pandemic as an excuse. Why are you not pursuing your purpose? So let's answer that million dollar question. Let's answer the million dollar question. Let's have who know we have a purpose, right? But, and we're ready to start, right? But we keep asking the same question over and over again. Where do I start? That's the million dollar question, right? Where do I start? What do I start is a common question and it's a debilitating question, you guys, because without an answer, most people just keep doing what it is they've been doing, which is operating in their comfort zone. Right. But I want to give you the answer to that question right now. So that way, moving forward, you have no reason why you can at least make the first step because you know where to start. All right. So where you start when you are ready to operate in purpose is that you start with examining the condition of your heart. That's where you start. Because the condition of your heart dictates your thoughts. What's in your heart will create the thoughts that you have about who you are, who you're destined to become. How you, you know, view your own value, whether or not you feel as though you're worthy to do better, to have better than what you have right now. The way you examine it is by determining if your heart is full of hurt, if it's full of regret, if it's full of sorrow. I don't know. Maybe it's full of happiness, doubt, insecurity, uncertainty, whatever it is that your heart is full of, you have to know what that is, right? And the way that you do that is by being honest with how you're feeling. You have to be honest about how you're feeling and be honest about the condition of your heart so you can know what needs to be done to fix the condition of your heart. (laughs) I know this sounds basic. This sounds super simple, right? But so many people are not doing the inner work. Because they're scared to to face something, right? They're scared to acknowledge what's really there. But let me tell you something. It's hard to fix something if you won't admit that it exists. 
So if your heart is broken, it's going to stay broken until you are willing to say, my heart is broken. So now I need to fix it. What can I do to fix it? So what would it take for you to finally heal the wounds that's keeping you from pursuing your purpose? What's it going to take? What would it take? Not a rhetorical question. What would it take for you to heal the wounds that's keeping you from pursuing your purpose? Would it take having someone to support you on your journey? Would it take that? Okay, cool. I got you. I volunteer for that. I, would it take, I don't know, talking to a therapist to overcome some unresolved trauma? Cool. No problem. I have resources. Hit me up in the DM or shoot me an email at info at LakeishaWooder.com. If you need resources, I can help you with that. Will it, I don't know, will it take you stepping outside of your comfort zone, doing something that you've never done before? Looking crazy to people who's not privy to your vision? Absolutely. It's it will absolutely take that. And I'm willing to go through all those different seasons with you if you're willing to accept my help and connect with me. All you got to do is ask for help. The help is there. There are plenty of pe out, people out here who's willing to help you. But for whatever reason, you're too afraid to admit that you need help. In every moment you spend afraid, somebody else is not receiving what it is that they need. Someone else is falling victim to an injustice. Someone else is not reading a book that's going to help them to get out of that domestic violent relationship. Somebody else is not getting the information that they need so they can get scholarships to go to college. Whatever that is that God has told you to do, somebody is not receiving what it is that they need because you're being afraid to operate in your purpose because you want to admit that you need help. We all need help. You guys know how I feel. I see a therapist myself. I'm getting with my therapist next week. I don't have a problem with asking for help and you shouldn't have a problem with that either. Because once your heart is in a good condition, then your thoughts will change. And soon thereafter, your actions will follow, right? Your actions will, will match up to the condition of your heart, to what it is, how you think about yourself. It's difficult to go hard after something that you want if your heart is not in it. That's why we start with Checking and changing the condition of our heart. Because our heart is the force that drives us to make that start so we can pursue our purpose. So I just wanted to just pop in and this wasn't even what I had planned to really talk about today, honestly, but I was so... <sighs> heartbroken <laughs> over, you know, the two stories that I heard yesterday that I'm like, we have to do more. We have to do more. We have to stop being bystanders with just retweeting stories. We have to do more than that. We have been called to do so much more individually and collectively, and we're not even being obedient. For one reason or another. And I feel like it's unnecessary because there are resources out there. There are people out there who's willing to help you if you're hungry enough to go after it. If you're willing, you know, to do something strange, to, to do something strange for a change. If you're willing to do that, I'm willing to do money with you. 
But the only way I can do that is if we connect. That's the only way I can do that. So thank you for allowing me to <laughs> pop on your feet and just air some things out. You know, I hope I stir something up in, in, in your spirit <laughs> that's going to, you know, encourage you to make a move toward pursuing your purpose during this pandemic, right? Because even though the world has slowed down, it hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. His name is Sean King. S-H-A-U-N King. And I, and I think his handle is Sean King here on, on Instagram as well. You know, Sean King, he is doing amazing work. I love, I love Sean King, you know, but everybody's not called to be Sean King. There's only one Sean King. Yep, that's it. There's only one Sean King. And then of you too. Like we need you and Char and Sean King. Like we need both of you. Like there's room for both of you. We don't only need Sean King. We need him and you in order to make this world a better place. But the way you show up is by operating your purpose. You're welcome, Paige. So, yeah, I'm going to give you back your day. Hope you have <laughs> hope you have an amazing day. And maybe tomorrow I can get back on schedule. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so share this video if you would with, you know, anybody that you know who can use an encouraging word, please share this video across all your social media platforms because it's easy for videos like, you know, the murder of, you know, George Floyd to go to go viral, but not videos like this that's telling people how they can help a situation right where they are. So help me to make this video viral by sharing this across all your social media platforms and sharing it with everybody that you know. And if you're catching this on a replay, please leave your comments, leave your questions, because I'll definitely loop back around to respond to your questions and your comments. All right. Even if you're catching this on the replay, you can still um, share this video. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And for joining me. And um, yeah, we're going to chat again tomorrow. All right. See you guys next time.